Good morning, guys. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. This is a great day. Oh, yeah. We have, uh, what do you call it? Daylight savings. Uh, you are the seven, eight. We win today. And 17 online. We're the ones that decided not to pretend like we forgot about daylight savings. <laughs> Leave your oven for a couple more days. Yeah, this is the small cue. <laughs> the your phone switches automatically. I was going to say, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's impossible. Maybe a decade ago, you know, maybe. But it's always good. I actually really, this one I don't love. The uh, spring forward one. Yeah. I don't love this one. I love the, uh, I love the fall back. That's always a little bit nice. But this does make it nice because we get really nice long days, which is great. So it's great to be with everyone. Hope you had an awesome weekend. So announcement wise, um, who's speaking this Wednesday? Um, at base camp? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be Mark Apuna. There's some shifts in home inspection. So you definitely want to come and get more tips from him. He's going to go over the basic things that we've been overlooking and where agents are making mistakes on educating their clients. So it's going to be really good. You guys don't miss that one at the 11 a.m. on Wednesday up in this room. And you guys, the, the egg hunt that we have for our spring client appreciation is um, April 14th at 6 p.m. It's where the pumpkin patch was. There'll be more information you guys get at the front desk so you guys can invite all of your clients, your SOI. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have food trucks, music, games, and hopefully um, a bunny there to take some pictures. <laughs> so it'll be a lot of fun, so don't forget that. We're trying to get more information right now on the pantry pack on when you guys can come in and help out and, you know. Tomorrow. Get... Tomorrow? Yeah. At 11 a.m., right? Um, I'm gonna confirm that. Too. Okay. So that's going to be in this room. So if you guys can take away some time and come up and help out, that'd be so fun. And it's a good way to give back, you guys. Yeah, so everybody here and online listening in, please come and help fill up uh, some of these pantry packs. The training room's full of stuff. If you look online, you can see Centerville did it the other day. Yeah. Got a good, uh, it's just, yeah, many hands make light work, but what a great opportunity to help. So yeah. hopefully you can be there. Any other announcements? And then, um, yeah. The compliance contract calls. You guys don't miss those. Those are really good and they help you navigate your contracts for your clients. It's at 9 a.m. every Tuesday and a link usually will go out. Um, they started to send that out daily, but if you don't have it, just look it up in your email and it should be there. Okay, so that's you get a lot of tips on how to navigate your contracts for your clients. It's really good. And that's Love about it. it so far. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, I've got like the three dots there that she's texting me to tell me a time, but I'll check in a second. Yeah. You know, so you know when someone's texting me back, they've written songs about those three dots I've seen. That are like, yeah. you ever sit and you're like, what are they writing me? I want to see. Um, okay, cool. Um, awesome. Well, hey, I've got a quick message for you this morning. Something that's been on my mind uh, this weekend and after some discussions with some other agents. Um, but number one, a um, couple quick thoughts. I've shared before this book that I really love called Living with a Seal. Uh, it's a guy, Jesse Itzler. And he, um, the, the seal is a former Navy SEAL, the guy, David Goggins, a uh, popular guy who wrote, You Can't Hurt Me. Um, such a cool guy, pr pretty inspirational uh, to me. Um, and he just completed one of those, like, I think it was like called the ultra man or something like that. It's like three days in a row of straight 12 hour, like swimming, running and biking. And I don't know if you guys are on Instagram. I'm sure you are, but you should jump on and watch this guy's thing. It's so cool to watch what he does and kind of the way that he's talking to himself throughout the experience and throughout the day and like the affirmations that he's using. And it reminded me of this quote uh, or this idea that I saw last week. And the idea was on belief and how powerful belief is. And the visuals, the visual that I kind of put to as I was reading this quote was like belief really um, can, it's like, it's like a brick almost in a way. And it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to pave a pathway for you or it's going to build up a wall and stop you from progressing. Isn't that interesting? Like when you believe something, when you, you believe it's going to come together or whatever, 
it kind of creates this pathway for you, this opportunity where the opposite is true. If you're, if you don't believe, or if you believe that you'll fail, it creates a brick wall and you can't even progress even an ounce. And so, man, if you want to see something cool, you should go watch this Instagram of him accomplishing this thing. It's really neat. Um, so today, um, talking about what, what's happening in your business and everything, I started thinking about this concept that I haven't talked about or really thought about for quite a while. And the idea is your job or what is my job? Um, and ultimately, look, we could get into a big, long conversation of to list and sell real estate or title or mortgages or whatever it is that you're doing, right? Um, but what is my job? What am I supposed to be doing? And um, one thing that I've done for years in any type of presentation opportunity is share some stuff that I learned from George years ago, and it's in the script book about um, kind of the four areas that I really try to focus on. And um, I think these are, these are critical. And if you have them memorized, committed to memory, I, I share this in every presentation I have because it's a way for you to separate yourself. Think about if you're interviewing someone to do something for you, anything, and they sit and tell you, look, I know what my job is. And they spell it out to you with clarity and with purpose. Are you going to have a lot more confidence in that individual? Probably for sure, right? There's no doubt about it. So the same thing is 100% true for us, right? We have to know our job. Um, so of these things, number one is to consult and advise. So for just a moment, and, and, and let's do a little participation here. What do we consult and advise people on? I'm going to make a list. Buying real estate. Okay. Buying and selling real estate. That's good. That kind of encompasses it all, right? <laughs> yeah. But seriously, dive a little deeper with me. Think about it. You're a consultant. You're an advisor. What could or should you be? I'll start saying stuff. Staging. Okay. What else? Pricing. What else? Market. Market conditions. Where's the lender? Lender? Good. What else? Negotiations. Negotiations. Investment. Investment. Okay. What about the well, condition? Choice of title. Title. Home warranty. <laughs> Inspections. What else? What else do you advise people of? Sounds stupid. How about like showing condition, right? When you're going to show a house, should you leave the blinds open, lights on, right? Showing condition. I'm only halfway trying on my scribbling here for the record. <laughs> I want that noted. I'm trying as hard as you are to make a list. So, so uh, showing condition. What else do we advise people on? Tristan did just say earlier marriage but i mean like kind of like an emotional support in a way. Like, yeah okay well i'll put therapy therapy great i'm like an unlicensed therapist we could yeah. probably get in trouble for that actually. <laughs> there's got to be somewhere where we can get in trouble that rob my assumption is you're kind of um advising on the overall process so when you make an offer what's the process of making an offer when you yes. receive an offer what's the process yes. of receiving an offer when you receiving you the seller when a buyer requests navigation, a, they're going to get an inspection. Yeah. What is that yeah. going to look like? Yeah. You're, are you going to walk them through the inspection through the, as a buyer? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, look, here's the deal guys. You know that if it was like, you know, you had a nice breakfast right now and you were really warmed up and ready to go, you know, we could make a list that fills this whiteboard. Right. I mean, like that. Yeah. We have so many items that we need to be consulting and advising people on. And here's the power of this. What if you have them all identified and you're able to stop with your client in the middle of a presentation and say, well, well, here's what's cool. Here's what separates me. So even if they don't say to you, have you guys ever been asked the question by someone? Well, why should I pick you? Anyone been asked that? 
Does that scare anyone to be asked that question? That's kind of a scary question. The, the idea here should be, I want to flip the, flip the script here. And I want to make sure if they don't, I, I love that question so much that I will make sure we discuss that even if they don't ask it. I'm so confident in the answer to that question that I am going to share it. Now, look, we might consult the same things as every agent can or should or does or should, but they're probably not talking about it, right? Not everybody discusses it. And part of our job, one second, Greg, part of our job is to ensure we are getting people to focus on the right things. Go ahead, Greg. I'm not surprised now looking at that, that we like to talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Get it all. We have an opinion on a lot of things, don't we? Yes. Uh, and I always get, the, what's the one question I always get is, should I hang out family photos or not? I mean, oh, in the house, personal photos. We are experts in that, right? People expect us to be their experts. It's kind of interesting. So I just made a statement a moment ago that, look, it's our job to get people to focus on the right things. I'm sure you were like me, where you've had your good moments in that and your bad moments. Um, I've shared before with my brother Jeff and I went to a listing presentation years and years ago, and it went so well. We were like best friends with the guy as we were leaving his house. It was a done deal. I've never in my career felt more confident that I had taken a listing than I did this appointment. But I didn't get a signature. And do you know why? He said, well, I promised this, this lady's coming in next. I promised her I'd meet with her. And, you know, I just kind of got to do that thing. And remember, I'm thinking here on getting people to focus on the right things. And so guess what? We left. And an hour later, we called. How'd the appointment go? It was literally like we were leaving. She was showing up. Guess what he said? I signed with her. And it was like, wait, what? And he's like, I know. Like, I don't know why I did, but I did. I'm, I'm going to work with her. And it was so bizarre. He was like apologizing to us. Like, I did something wrong. I think I did something wrong, but I'm going to work with her. And what did she do? She got him to focus on the right stuff that I didn't. Yes, there you go. Yeah, I throw my hands up. So guys, we have tons and tons of stuff. So when someone's talking to you and you're saying, well, this is, I know my job. One of the elements of that is to consult and advise. Number two, market and expose. Okay, what does that look like? What do we do in the world of marketing and exposing? Yes. Yeah. If I started again, and look, we could, we could make a big long list here, but think about it. Yeah, we're, I used to make this joke. I'm different from other real estate agents. I don't just put a sign in the yard, put the home on the MLS, and then cross my fingers or pray that it sells. Right. That was the joke I used to say years ago. I used to tell people, well, here's what I do differently. And this is in relation to both of these. Actually, I'll just write it down. Uh, the, lot, the other one is negotiate. Market and expose and negotiate. So my job. So when you're looking at these items, think about it for a moment. What are you doing outside the box to market and expose properties? Well, do you have to do much in this market? Think about it. What can you? Yeah, that's the good question. You don't necessarily have to because things are on fire, but boy, do you have an obligation to, right? Isn't one of your biggest objectives to get as many people through that home as possible until you have the right offer? Isn't it one of your obligations to try to make sure that you're putting you know, everything, your best foot forward into getting perhaps as many offers as possible. Greg, go ahead. You know, I don't do a ton of business, but my last listing was a very busy job. Okay, multiple, multiple offers, making sure every agent that offered the buyers were acknowledged and dealt with right. Yeah, it's a lot of work.
work. It, it, it can be a ton of work. In fact, somebody recently I know had something like 25, 25 offers on the deal. And uh, I was on the, I wasn't actually, I wasn't even involved in the transaction. I was just told that this, they, I was in the car when somebody received a rejection um, to the contract. And it was like, I can't believe they had ever, their clients sign every single rejection, oh. you know, from the rep seat. But kind of interesting. So marketing and exposing. What if I asked you right now, what can you do outside the box to get a home sold? What are you doing differently from other people to get your home sold? Now, we're talking about two things here. There's number one, there's the idea of, okay, what does it actually take to get a home sold? And number two, how are you marketing yourselves to people? So let's even start with some of the easy stuff, like putting a sign in the yard and putting a home on the MLS. Well, you shouldn't even talk about that because everyone can do that, right? Well, wait a minute. Is it possible that you're better with your MLS than someone else is? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Ruby. How? Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about it. How could you be better than other people on the MLS? Well, Go ahead. Over time in real estate, I've gotten to understand the system a lot better and I can use it better. I can do searches a lot more quickly. I can pull stuff particularly for specific things. So I think with just practicing it, you can slowly become more aware of the CRM. I like that. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the words you use in the MLS, yeah. it's like your description. There's plenty of times where a house can be so beautiful and there's nothing to describe it. Yeah. yeah. Or they completely word, yeah. miss like a key aspect. You go see the home and like, why didn't they talk yeah. about this in the MLS? It's pretty amazing. Think about good. this. Okay. Do words matter in marketing? Yeah. Yeah. Heck, they matter in everything. So of course they matter in marketing. So that's one quick element. What about the photos that you're using mm -hmm. on the MLS, right, Rob? This is this is a real key point because this right here, in my opinion, is what's going to separate you from the, your competition in your listing presentation. Because in your presentation, if you come across confidently, I'm going to come in there and say, my sign is better than Jeremy's sign. Why? You're in the same company. It both says Century 21 Everest. Right. This is the big difference is. My sign has my phone number and my name on it. Yep. And when the phone rings, I'm the one that's going to be answering the phone and handling all the objections that are com coming from the, the whole transaction. My MLS is better than Jeremy's MLS because I'm the one that's going to be overseeing the entire thing, making sure that the accuracy of all the information, all the words, all the photos, everything that we do is going to be done. So would you rather have your all the information to be done perfectly, great, and have me represent you or would you rather have it have not so great whatever and have jeremy represent you <laughs> uh, i'm going to cast it that way yeah. and or if i don't have question is people, have you ever yeah but i'm going to cast it that way whether it be i say jeremy's name or the other agent yeah yeah it's isn't it can you just feel the confidence yeah oozing out of a person that is like, I know. It's pretty remarkable. Like, think about that. Like the yard sign, you guys. What used to be one of the most powerful parts of my presentation, you know, what used to be so common, I don't really see them that much anymore, but the, the sign writers with the call this number and all yeah. that stuff, I used to love that because I used to say, here's the difference between me and everyone else. I call back. And I would give people the idea of saying, before you sign with me, go ahead, call, call mine. Here's a number of one of mine and go around your neighborhood. You'll see 10 more of these. See who calls you back. I will do that because I'm going to exhaust every option to get your home sold. So think about, I mean, we sat here for just one minute. There's so many more things that you could be doing to think outside the box to expose and market a property to people. And it could be as simple as all the details that you are doing, they just have no idea that you do those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just like we're talking about my MLS is better than yours. Why is my key box better than your key box? I'll actually ask agents that. They're like, oh, so people can get into the property. 
Well, my key box is better than yours. I think I'm going to put a key box on, on the home to protect you, to protect your home, to get only qualified agents and qualified buyers to uh, walk through your house and to call them and get feedback so we can make the best of both your home and we can reevaluate. Yep. And then I can give you reports of who's walking through the home and we can see who's going to put in an offer. See, it's all about how you present yeah. your key box. I'll, I'll ask agents that come to me and like, okay, in your presentation, how are you explaining that? Oh, so they can get in the house. But why is my key box better? Because I'm doing it there to protect them, to protect the house, to get feedback, to get qualified agents, to put the qualified buyers to walk the property only. Ruby key also box. puts Jolly Ranchers in the key yeah. container <laughs> so that every time they open the key box, they get a piece of candy. <laughs> okay, love it. Um, negotiate. We hit this a little bit, but just think about your negotiating. Again, you know, that's one of the old lines that you've probably heard a million times, but I love using it as you know, like an, a, some agent's idea of negotiating is, can I get, this was a word I used to use, can I get your fax number, but, it, you know, can I get your email address? What's the best? That, that's their way to negotiate. Hey, what's the best email address for me to send an offer to? No questions about the property, no questions about the seller, no questions about any of that. It's just simply, that's it. So think about for a moment, what separates you from your competition? Have you ever read a book on negotiation in here? If you haven't, it's kind of cool to be able to say, I read books about negotiating. Yeah. You know, and just to talk about like, I'm passionate about it or helping people understand um, how, how important it is to you. But be thinking about the idea of like, how do you negotiate? You're asking the right questions. You're trying to understand. Um, one of the lines over the last several years has been, look, I, I, I used to say I want to negotiate you a great deal. But now it's important that it's like, I'm going to negotiate you a deal, <laughs> meaning the deal. the deal. I am going to get you this while others maybe will not. You will increase your chances of getting this home as a, as a buyer, uh, an offer accepted because I'm at the helm here because I'm going to negotiate this for you. Every step of the way, whatever, whatever you, whatever you hand to me, I'm going to give it the best look possible. If it was even possible to get this done, I will make sure it gets done. I will say as a consumer, I'm going to do your hands and show. I think that the house that I have today is mainly because of my agents. Cool. Mm -hmm. Because I know the competing offer that was presented and the only way that it made sense is because they had my back and they did what they needed to do to get me the property. Yeah. 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 I, I'm sure you're right. I, I yeah. hear, don't we hear it every day? I hear it every day where people are like, it's not the highest offer that we're right. accepting. We have higher offers, but it's the best one. Did I see a hand, Jim? Yeah. I'm reading, I'm looking at a contract right now. Yeah. The, 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 it's under contract and this is part of the attendant. It's kind of crazy, but can I read it? Please. Okay, it says buyer. This is, you know, an addendum that they're negotiating. The buyer will send 12 crumble cookies uh, 24 hours after acceptance. That was one. And then it says buyer, buyer's agent will provide two ski passes to Bright Ski Resort. <laughs> and this is a deal. I mean, this is yeah. true. Yeah, so I just, it's interesting. You Think know, about it. Like, <laughs> guys, I'm yeah. telling you, I've seen some crazy stuff happening. People that say like free tacos for a year. Yeah. Pizza free too. pizza for a year. One of the guys on my team is under contract right now on a property and the, the buyer's a massage therapist. She offered 12 uh, massage sessions or something like, and, and, and here's the thing. Is it is are the tacos going to seal the deal? Meaning, like, well, both offers are the same. Um, uh, this one, you know, they'll close sooner, but this one's going to give us free tacos. That depends on what's important. That's true. That's why you have it, right? Will it be memorable? Most of the battle, like a lot of a lot of what I do when I'm in the middle of negotiating, is I'm trying to get the other agent to be rooting for me. Right? Have you guys ever been on the listing side and you've kind of been like, boy, I hope that agent yeah, yes. gets this. They're asking the right questions. They're doing what I've said. They seem professional, 
right? And isn't it cool that you can actually go to the seller and say, look, I know you've got two offers on the table. Here's my opinion about these two offers. You know, this person appears to be, it's, it's unbelievable sometimes when people are in a multiple offer situation, yeah. how they land so close together. So yeah, a lot of times. Send, as soon as we got the offer, they confirmed that I got the offer. They had the lender call me within an hour. Yeah. Saying, hey, I'm just calling you about some some client. They just put an offer on your property. I yep. just wanted to talk about them a little bit. Yep. So they even had the lender call me. Just so different like, things here, different styles, different ways to get yourself the deal. And it's so important. I actually have a whole hour long training just on how to approach a multiple offer situation and the things you should focus on. But really, make sure that you're focused on and this one i didn't hit as well as we should just on the exposure on the buying side how are you exposing your buyers to homes and stuff we'll have to do that another time but okay so consultant advice market and expose negotiate um fourth and final is to uh oversee the transaction okay oversee the transaction now a lot more deals are coming together than they they used to, but I remember at one point there was a thing that was like it, 50, it seemed like half the deals that went under contract were falling apart at some level. That seems high to me right now as I'm saying it, but boy, it seems, I don't know, Rob, does that seem crazy like a decade ago? It just seemed like a ton of transactions that were going under contract uh, were actually falling apart after. And why is that? Well, some of it's failure in this world, right? but it's your job as an agent to oversee the transaction. And what does that look like? Where can trouble pop up? You know, it's funny to me because look, I take a lot of pride in all of these areas, but let's, let's, lest we forget that right now, it's, it's pretty easy for someone, anyone to get an offer, wouldn't you say? For sure it is. And when you look at that and you say, well, it's easy to get the offer, when does the work really start? Well, isn't it once you're under contract, don't you have a whole new job to do at that point? There's so much more to do. And if, if you feel like there's not, you're not doing it right. There's a lot more work that needs to be done to make sure that the transaction's being overseen properly, that you're protecting your clients from a cancellation somewhere. You're protecting. Anyone ever had the oh shoot moment when you're like, when was the due diligence for my buyer? <laughs> and you're just like, oh, like so scared that it's going to be passed. You know, I, I remember I had a moment like that years and years ago. And uh, it was really scary. And it was kind of this moment that I was like, it was in the first year of my real estate career. And I don't know what happened. I, because I, you're not using a TC. Probably. <laughs> Good call. Yeah, I definitely I wasn't. set up the dates for you. So it's all yes. But the point is, is that I wasn't overseeing the transaction properly. And it's like, holy Toledo, that could get someone in big trouble. I mean, think about that. And, and unfortunately, I've seen it many times since with other agents coming to me saying, so let's just say someone forgot the date of, you know, and it's just like, it's big trouble, you know? So anyway, guys, you know, there's so much to be done in all four of these worlds. The key thing for me to you today is to say, go and identify them. Do a little work on your business today from the standpoint of identify what these things are. Put it in a position where you're like, hey, these are my top five or 10 strongest points in each one of these. So that as you're sitting with a client and, and they're not saying, why should I pick you? Or how do you separate yourself? That you're saying, you know, here's one last thing for us to really focus on. Or may I share with you why I separate myself from my competition? May I share with you why I'm worth 6% when I know others are allowing you to pay three and a half? is making sure you're identifying these items. It goes a long, long way. Other thoughts, questions? Go ahead. Um, I just love the market and expose, um, like the, the different perspective that I got, especially when it does come to like what we do provide, right? Sure. Um, I sold a house up in Suncrest, Utah. Okay. Well, it was a townhome, but I absolutely love the drive going up there, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's gorgeous, especially in the fall. Yeah. So when I sold it, I had this really 
be big, beautiful description. Um, and when I had the open house, the buyer, the buyer that I met at the open house literally said that in my description, he felt that he was driving through the home with my words, right? So it was like wow. something that really sold it. So once he got there, it almost like kind of put everything yeah. together for him. And we were under contract with that buyer. It was, you know, perfect. Um, so I just thought that was a, a really good touch that I can definitely implement when I'm talking to sellers or, and selling myself, right? Yeah. Like what I provide them. Yeah. So. I love it. I, love I think that. you're hundred percent right. Yeah. I just wanted to add one thing to oversee the transaction is you guys where, who is your team? Who's your lender? Who's your title? Who's your, um, who's your communication? Who's your TC? Do you have a strong team that has your back? Build that so they can help you to oversee the transaction if it goes smooth. That's really important. I'm gonna start using the TC. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Boom. TC is a wonderful from a child's perspective. TC is the opportunity. Oh yeah, let me confirm time, guys. In front of you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so like right here. Nope. Uh, she okay. says we need some people that would be willing to set up starting about nine, but need everyone to show up at 11 to start packing the bag. She says, sorry, I can't remember. Your location time is on the flyer. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I really think we should call this the egg again. <laughs>